Space Shuttle Challenger. Lift off from a freezing cold Florida to the cheers of the young students of the first ever U.S. teacher astronaut. Moments later, full throttle and point of highest stress. A massive explosion. The cheering stops. The horror sinks in. Seven Americans with the highest hopes. A billion dollars worth of the highest technology. Gone in seconds. The worst disaster in the U.S. space program ever. <laughs> Good evening, this is the CBS Evening News, Dan Rather reporting. Never before in 25 years of Americans in space, never in 25 launches of the space shuttle had a life been lost. Today, that record went down in flames. Tonight, the search for survivors turned up none. The search for answers is just starting. Bruce Hall begins our coverage of a spaceship that became a fireball and a national tragedy. The deaths in service of their country of hero astronauts and hero teachers. It was a very happy and confident crew that departed for the shuttle this morning. Future astronaut Krista McAuliffe said they had gotten over the frustration of the earlier delays. Actually, and technicians had an apple for her shortly, moments before she uh, actually entered the shuttle. Uh, but the crew ready. had to sit on the pad for an extra hour while NASA took a close Coming look up, at the uh, ice that formed during the night in the freezing temperatures. There was concern that some of that ice could strike the shuttle the, during liftoff. Uh, water is, uh, Finally, after a detailed ice inspection, Three, the word was two, given, go one. for launch. And liftoff, liftoff of the 25th Space Shuttle mission, and it has cleared the tower. It was the first launch from the newly refurbished pad 39B in more than 10 years. NASA officials say they saw no indications of any trouble or difficulty prior to the horrifying explosion. Altitude 4.3 nautical miles, downrange distance 3 nautical miles. Engines throttling up, three engines now at 104%. Challenger, go at throttle up. Challenger, go at throttle up. The explosion appeared to destroy Challenger. The solid rocket boosters emerged from the fireball, continuing to fly uncontrollably for several seconds before plunging into the Atlantic Ocean, leaving a trail of smoke. Coast Guard Lieutenant Dave Baird watched the explosion from aboard a commercial jet. Basically, it looked like it just tore itself to shreds and, and was uh, on fire. And it looked like a, a kid's uh, airplane being uh, hit by the wind, and it, it, it was a, it didn't appear that anything could have survived uh, from our vantage point. The Coast Guard immediately launched an emergency rescue effort, but all that was found were small pieces of debris scattered over a wide area. NASA officials put together an investigation team this afternoon, but gave no indication of the cause of the explosion. It will take all the data, careful review of that data, before we can draw any conclusions on this national tragedy. NASA sources say the immediate attention is being focused on what appeared to be fuel or vapors that appeared around the solid rocket boosters and the main fuel tank a second or two before the explosion. NASA bristles at suggestions that they launched the shuttle under pressure today. There was absolutely no pressure to get uh, this particular launch off. Uh, we have always uh, maintain that flight safety is our top priority. Could NASA officials announced this afternoon they are suspending all shuttle operations until there is some indication of the cause of the explosion. Bruce Hall, CBS News, at the Kennedy Space Center. There was so much happiness this morning, so much excitement. The only tears were tears of joy. The parents of school teacher Krista McCullough standing proud as their daughter and the others lifted off. Lift off of the 25th Space Shuttle mission and it has cleared the tower. But in just one minute and 12 seconds, all the joy and all the excitement was dead, extinguished in a flash. Maximum heartbreak, uh, torn up inside. This is the emotional part. And immediately the reporter begins to ask, what the hell went wrong? And in the small towns that surround the Space Center, America's tragedy was their personal tragedy. I saw it, I watched it, I cried. I couldn't believe it. 
I came outside and they said, there it goes. And I watched it go up. And then suddenly, boom. It's a great loss. The life, the knowledge, surely. There were seven victims who died today and millions of others who still live. Velocity, I'm sad. I've cried. And I will cry again. I really will. I'm sorry. Bernard Goldberg, CBS News, Cocoa Beach, Florida. Now, using our scale model of the shuttle Challenger and slow motion stop action videotape of the accident in space, let's try to go over once again just what happened. First of the model, you can see that the Challenger on either side has the solid rocket boosters, the tanks that hold the rubber-like solid fuel. The large orange tank is the main liquid fuel tank. Now, we'll rotate the model just a bit to roughly the position the Challenger was in just before the explosion. What we're seeing now is stop action footage of the mission, just about one minute and 11 seconds in. We see the shuttle and one of the solid rocket boosters. At this point, a small flame leak is already visible in between. As we roll this ahead in slow motion, another flame leak appears above about one second later. Then, scant tenths of a second later, a large clear flame and then the last massive explosion. The Challenger enveloped in a terrible fireball over the next three seconds. Finally, just past one minute and 14 seconds, you can see one of the solid rocket boosters blown aside in the top right-hand corner of the screen, the booster shooting off away from the fireball. The seven crew members aboard Space Shuttle Challenger today were Spacecraft Commander Francis R. Dick Scobie, 46, born in Washington State, who flew combat in Vietnam. The pilot today was 40-year-old Michael Mike Smith, born Beaufort, South Carolina, a naval aviator and test pilot who'd flown 28 different kinds of aircraft. Judith Resnick, 36, hometown Akron, Ohio, an electrical engineer who earlier became this nation's second woman in space. 35-year-old Ronald McNair, he held a doctorate from MIT, was a scholar from Lake City, South Carolina. Air Force Lieutenant Colonel Ellison Onosuka, who was from Hawaii, he was 39 and last year took part in America's first manned military space flight. 41-year-old Gregory Jarvis, a native of Detroit, was bumped from Columbia's December flight to today's Challenger flight to make room for Congressman Bill Nelson as a congressional observer. And the seventh member of this crew was Krista Corrigan McAuliffe, the 37-year-old school teacher and mother of two from Concord, New Hampshire. What started as a party at Concord High School today ended in tears as students watching the launch learned about as hard a lesson as life offers. Steve Young was in Concord. Three, two, one. About 300 Concord High School students had gathered to watch the launch of their star social studies teacher. It took a minute to realize that what they were watching was a disaster. Students were dismissed about an hour later, still no. Everybody's just like, they're all just falling apart, all the teachers and everything. I don't ever want to go there. I just, it's been proven unsafe. Afterward, the principal said guidance counselors will try to help students anguished by the tragedy. You're telling kids uh, in particular that uh, it's okay to feel uh, bad about this. It's okay to be sorrowful. It's okay to cry. McAuliffe was one of the most popular teachers at Concord High. Students followed her training every step of the way. The 37-year-old mother of two hoped to show by her example that space is a world open to anyone. One of the things that I hope to bring back into the classroom is to make that connection with the students that they too are part of history, that the space program belongs to them. We were with them on Saturday night and her little girl um, said to me, is mommy in space yet? And I said, no, not yet, pretty soon. And Everybody was just so happy. Everybody was so thrilled that out of 11,000 teachers, um, Krista was the, the one that was selected. There were mostly empty streets in Concord today and deserted shops as the town began to move. I just watched it over again. It happened again. Very sad. Very sad for the family and everybody. One friend took a picture of Krista during a town celebration last summer. She picked it up just today left with a photo and her group. Steve Young, CBS News, Concord.
Besides the symbolism of putting school teacher Krista Corrigan McAuliffe aboard today's flight to be the first public citizen American civilian in space to spread the wonder and to inspire and teach the young back on Earth on live television, this Challenger mission had other goals in keeping with its reusable space plane, space truck, workhorse role. It was supposed to put up a $100 million satellite that would have become part of NASA's own shuttle communications network. It was also supposed to launch a $10 million payload to study Halley's Comet. Coming up next, Leslie Stahl has the latest on President Reagan's reversal and eventual postponement of the State of the Union address, and Bob Simon will look at our space voyaging nation in a state of shock. President Reagan at first today said he was going to go on through with tonight's scheduled State of the Union speech, then put it off when the full dimension of the tragedy in space sank in. White House correspondent Leslie Stahl reports. At the White House, the president watched a replay of the tragedy this morning in stunned silence. He said it was a horrible thing, a tremendous shock. Today is a day for mourning and remembering. Nancy and I are pained to the core by the tragedy of the shuttle Challenger. We know we share this pain with all of the people of our country. The president postponed his upbeat State of the Union speech tonight for one week and sent Vice President Bush off to Cape Canaveral this afternoon to convey his feelings personally to the families. But despite his sorrow, the president said he's determined that the space program continue. We don't hide our space program. We don't keep secrets and cover things up. We do it all up front and in public. That's the way freedom is, and we wouldn't change it for a minute. We'll continue our quest in space. There will be more shuttle flights and more shuttle crews, and yes, more volunteers, more civilians, more teachers in space. Nothing ends here. It was Mr. Reagan's idea to send a teacher into space. Krista McAuliffe was his first thought when he heard the news this morning. The president called the entire crew courageous pioneers who gave their lives on the new frontier. We will never forget them, nor the last time we saw them this morning as they prepared for their journey and waved goodbye and slipped the surly bonds of earth to touch the face of God. Leslie Stahl, CBS News, the White House. Space agency officials waited most of the day before saying anything, and when they did speak, it was only to say they won't say anything until and unless they know for sure what happened, what went wrong. David Martin reports the investigation Day one. NASA doesn't know what happened, and neither do the makers of these white solid rocket boosters which helped lift the shuttle from the launch pad. I don't believe there's sufficient evidence on the replays to be able to ascertain the nature of the problem. Or the makers of the orange external fuel tank which carried a half million pounds of highly volatile liquid hydrogen and oxygen. What we have is what you see on television, and it's very hard to tell anything from that. While investigators search for answers, there is only speculation by informed observers about the apparent leak which touched off the giant fireball, dwarfing the remains of one of the 140-foot solid rocket boosters. It appears that there were some, some burn-throughs and some flame leaks coming out, and once this extremely hot gas comes out, it could, it could ignite an explosion of the, of the uh, external tank. But another expert said that alone could not have caused the massive fireball. The very large explosion that took place would have to have involved the, uh, the propellants in this, in this large tank. The hydrogen uh, and oxygen. Hydrogen and oxygen in that tank. What could have caused the external tank to fail like that? Could it have been unexpected weather conditions high in the atmosphere? Winds aloft uh, looked good. We didn't have any uh, exceedances as far as our load indicators are concerned, to my knowledge. And uh, we thought everything was in uh, good shape for a launch this morning. Could it have been the ice which coated the shuttle just hours before launch? Most observers say no, since the launch was delayed to allow the ice time to melt. Right now, there are many more questions than answers. Until the investigators can come up with both answers and solutions, no more Americans will venture into space. David Martin, CBS News, the Pentagon. In a moment, the U.S. space program under pressure. Was it too much pressure?